Ocean Gate shouldn't have been doing what it was doing. I think that's pretty clear. I wish I had been more vocal about that, but I think I was unaware that they weren't certified uh, because I wasn't really studying it. I wasn't really interested. Stockton Rush asked me if I wanted to go out there and dive this season. You know, I wasn't interested. There was a lot of concern about this outfit and this sub. A lot of concern, even to the extent that I wasn't involved in it because I was making Avatar 2 at the time, but a lot of them got together and wrote a letter to, uh, to Ocean Gate and said, you have to certify. You cannot take people down. It's irresponsible. And it could lead to catastrophe. Monday morning when I first found out about the incident, got on a whole bunch of calls and emails. It's a small community. Within an hour and a half, I had the following information. They were on descent. They were at 3,500 feet. They lost comms and tracking. The last one being the critical one because the, the transponder that's used to track a sub during descent and on the bottom is a fully autonomous system. It's in its own pressure housing and it has its own battery power. So for them to lose comms and tracking at the same time, sub was gone. There was no question in my mind. I, for days I, I tried to run other scenarios that could account for it. I could come up with nothing. Um, so the next thing I did was contacted a few more people and uh, managed to track down, uh, you know, there are acoustic networks around. Some are research, some are, some are intelligence. Um, we got confirmation within an hour that there had been a loud bang at the same time that the sub was, that comms were lost. A loud bang on the hydrophones, loss of transducer or transponder, loss of comms. I knew what happened. Sub imploded. I, I sent emails to everybody I know. I said, we've lost some friends. The sub has imploded. It's on the bottom in pieces right now. I sent that out Monday morning. I never believed in that technology of wound carbon fiber, you know, wound filament, uh, cylind cylindrical hull. I thought it was a horrible idea. Um, I wish I'd spoken up, you know, but I, I assumed somebody was smarter than me, you know, because I'd never experimented with that technology, but it just sounded bad on its face because we make pressure hulls out of contiguous material, steel, titanium, ceramic, acrylic. And so you can model it. You can do finite element analysis of it. And, you know, you understand the yield properties. You understand the, the number of cycles that it can, that it can take. Um, but you can't do that with a composite material because it's two dissimilar materials, you know, sort of bonded together. And so we all knew that the danger was delamination and, and progressive failure over time with microscopic water ingress and fatigue, what they call cycling fatigue. And we knew that the, if the sub passed its pressure test, it wasn't going to fail on the first dive. It might fail on dive seven, or I don't, I don't know what they're at, you know, but it's going to fail over time which is insidious. You don't get that with steel or with titanium. Now there's one wreck lying next to the other wreck for the same damn reason. 